this for your time today. Yeah, Appreciate no, it's all good. I just woke up. You just woke up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went to bed like 3 o'clock. And I went, you know, I'm, a, I'm on a different time zone, so. Why is that? Uh, coming from America. You come from, you live in America full time? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, hey, do you yeah. miss Britain? Uh, for shopping and certain yeah. things, but. I know, I think it's changed a lot now. Yeah. And, um, you know, for me, when I was living here, I thought it was really gray. Gray and wet. Yeah. And now I'm living in Jamaica, it's like green and slush and, you know, it's a paradise. So yeah. I'd rather that. We saw, I saw your crib in Jamaica on MTV Cribs, that's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Do, you, do you wake up and think, wow, every day? I would. Uh, you know, I, it, it wears out after a while. Does it really? Yeah, because what happens when someone comes to your house, you see their amaze. And they yeah. go, wow, and then you catch, what, then it kind of wakes you back up of what you're living in. Yeah. So, you know, I was saying, you know, so many people, especially in Jamaica, Trinidad, all these places, live in a paradise. Yeah. But yet, they want to come over this side. To live to my and council estate. Ev and everybody over here <laughs> wants to go there. So it's like, it's like that. If you, if you, you see any... One, you always want one, you've not yeah. got that. Yeah. If you see anyone in, in Jamaica that would like to move to Winmore in, in England, <laughs> then uh, please, if you're looking in Jamaica, my father's in Jamaica somewhere, never yeah. met him. You've somewhere. never been to Jamaica? No, my father's there. We're Bro, talking come a little to Jamaica, about man. Come to yeah. Jamaica, you're invited, man. Anytime. We're best friends now. <laughs> this is a fact. Um, welcome to Rugby, I'm, and I'm honoured to be one of my sporting heroes. I remember growing up watching this man destroy opponent after opponent, Lennox Lewis, welcome to Rubem. Thank you Thank for you. coming on. It's all good. All good. Talking a little bit about our heritage there, because we, we've got a similar kind of journey. We were both born in London. You went off to Canada to live. I went up to, just up the north to Leeds. Yeah. Um, and obviously spending your growing up years uh, up to the age of 12 in England, then moving to Canada. W was it a difficult move at that, that age? It was a difficult move. Um, you know, I had a Cockney accent. And uh, when I was uh, over in Canada, people used to correct my speech all the time. I was saying, got any tomatoes? There's tomatoes, there's tomatoes. <laughs> you know, it's things like that. So I actually felt I was, um, you know, speaking incorrectly. And then I would always get into fights because yeah. some kid would say something about, what you're saying, shut up, shut up. <laughs> I'm like, shut up, oh, you shut up. <laughs> and then we would get into a lot of fights. And then, uh, you know, after the third time getting the strap from the principal, he said, listen, you should get into boxing, you should go to the gym and get into some contact sports. So that's what I did. I was playing all different sports, boxing, uh, was the leader though. How, how old were you when you started boxing? I was uh, 14. 14? Yeah, 14. And it's an Olympic year this year, everyone's really excited for Rio. Yeah. Uh, one of our partners, Keith Senior, ex-Great Britain International, he's actually riding to Rio wow. as part of a challenge from Rugby League Cares. He's riding from the Olympic Stadium in London all the way to Rio, oh. uh, raising fantastic money for the Jane Tomlinson uh, uh, appeal and also Rugby League Cares. So good luck, Keith. I know he's just out there good now. Luck. Good, good luck. Good luck, Keith. Um, yeah, make sure you put some mosquito spray on. Well, you know, it's, it's a dangerous place, Brazil, apparently, I've yeah. been told. Uh, so I think Keith's a little bit worried, but we'll, we'll be checking in with him. But in the Olympic year, you've been there yourself, yes. um, represented Canada twice right. in 84 and 88, winning your gold medal. How did it feel to get up? As a Brit representing Canada, uh, were you always British or what? <coughs> Is, was it strange for you? Well, um, you know, you could say I'm... It, I look at it like this. I'm part of the Commonwealth. So, yeah. you know, I represent part of the Commonwealth and, uh, you know, it's all all one in a sense. You know, every country's together that's part of the Commonwealth. And um, I, I wouldn't say it was weird. I think the Olympic experience was great. You know, never been to the Olympics before. I had all these different reservations like, yeah. oh, those Russians, I want to get them. Oh, those Germans, I want to get them. You know, the Cuban boxers were the best at that time, so I wanted to get them. So I had certain goals in my head, and that's what I wanted to uh, complete. And uh, it was so... I didn't do it the, in the 84 Olympics. I lost to Tyrell yeah. Biggs. 88 Olympics, I beat Riddick Bull, and uh, that was uh, the launch of my professional career. Turning professional is a great British fighter. Yeah. Um, we know there's a, there's a lot of prestige about being a British fighter. Um, and then going on to becoming the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Can I ask you, what was, what's been in your career your proudest moment? Because obviously you've got the Olympics, you've got the, the titles. Yeah. What, what do you look back on and go, you know what, that was the one for me? 
You know, I can look back on a lot of things that, yeah. um, you know, every fight I fought was a special fight for me because, you know, I would um, have them in different places. And it's not like I was boxing at home, uh, especially uh, most of the time. In order to uh, go against the Americans, I had to, I had to go to America yeah. uh, to challenge Tyson Holyfield. You know, I look at the heavyweights today, Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, uh, uh, David Hay. They're, they don't have to go across the yeah, water yeah, like yeah. I did. You know, all their competitions in their backyard. So, uh, you know, they've got a different approach to it. You know, these, these heavyweights are young nowadays and, uh, you know, they've got a lot to learn and they're, they're basically, you know, learning at the top. But, uh, you know, once uh, the, the smoke clears, you're going to see who the best heavyweight is. So that's what I want to see. In your opinion, who is the best heavyweight? At the moment, you'd have to say Tyson Fury because he beat the man that beat the man. And yeah. that's, uh, that's Klitschko, uh, Vladimir Klitschko. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to see in his next fight if uh, Vladimir is uh, going to wake up and, and, and try and beat uh, Tyson Fury. But uh, I'm, looking, I'm looking down the line. I want to see Tyson Fury and uh, uh, Anthony Joshua fight. Yeah. Or even David Hay. Yeah, I can, mean, can you relate to Joshua? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You... yeah, he's a powerhouse. He's strong. Uh, he throws great punches. You know, we're just gonna have to. See, we want to see him a bit in a bit in against better opponents, so we yeah. can see his boxing ability and see more from him. But uh, you know, he's passed all the tests already. He's you know Olympic champion. Now he's world champion, and uh, we're gonna have to see if he can dis sustain that. You mentioned places and going over and fighting different places. Yeah. But I wanted to ask Lennox Lewis, where is your happy place? Where is my happy place? Yeah. My happy place is probably, you know, I'm going to have to say I love living in, um, you know, a paradise. Yeah. And uh, I find that in the Caribbean islands, beautiful. If ever, anybody's never been in the Caribbean island, come. Beautiful water, beautiful. It's green, it's lush, a lot of birds, a lot of bugs. But uh, <laughs> I love it. And uh, Jamaica obviously being your home, and you married Miss Jamaica. Yeah. You're definitely buying that. Oh, you, yeah. Have you met Brian Lara? Yeah. Yes. Everybody say it to you. Yeah. You like Brian Lara? Love Brian Lara. Every year I get invited <laughs> to his parties, and uh, I haven't been yet, but I will, I will come to one of his parties. Um, you mentioned Rugby League before, because we've seen you as part of the Toronto launch, mm. and Rugby AM was showcasing the personalities of Rugby League and bringing superstars like yourself yeah. into the game and discussing it. Do you, are you aware of Rugby League? Were you aware before the Toronto? Have, have you had any kind of touch with the Rugby League before? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, i got a lot of friends that are rugby players and play rugby. And then, you know, I used to play when I was younger, you know, but it was more of a, um, a flag football where yeah. you had the flag on you kind of grab it. So that was my kind of rugby. <laughs> I didn't really get into the tussles or anything like that, but uh, it's an exciting game. You know, it's a quick game. It's constantly moving. And, and uh, you know, I'm, sh I'm shocked that... Uh, a lot of people uh, are not more into, especially bigger guys. It's, it's going to be interesting. The Toronto project we've been told by Adam Fogarty, who's yeah. in Snatch, uh, yeah. gorgeous George as well. Yeah. He, he's a great bloke, and he's teamed up with Eric Perez and a great team over there, bringing Toronto, the first franchise transatlantic, yeah. into the UK. It's a great project, and uh, do you think the Canadian people are going to really buy into it? I think so. I, I hope so. Uh, I think um, it's going to be great for Canada. Uh, Canada is such a international city it's a, a metropolis and there's no reason why rugby shouldn't be one of the major sports in that city so i was really happy uh, to hear that the wolf pack's going to be in toronto and that rugby's going to be in toronto that different teams are going to be flying over so is that transatlantic aspect of it which is so appealing so especially for Canadians, I think, and for the world. So it's going to be a good matchup. So I've got to ask you, are you a London fan or are you a Toronto fan? Oh, um, uh, I haven't seen the London team play yet, but I hear they're tough guys. And I haven't seen the Toronto team play yet. So I'm going to tell you that answer after I see them play. We'll bring you to a game, without a doubt. <laughs> We're here today at the launch for a massive fight. Uh, m and is, is obviously a different sport to boxing. Are you a big fan of all sports? Yeah, I'm, I, I love all sports. I love uh, combat sports, you know, if it's uh, kickboxing, if it's uh, wrestling, if it's MMA. You know, I love it because it's a contact sport. We're all 
brothers in arms in one sense. You know, we all train hard. You know, we all want the same things to be champions. So it's it's a great discipline even just to train. So you know, you can get boxers and UFC guys in the same gym training, and uh, each one of them like to see each other's others fight. So yes, I am a big fan of MMA. Talking of brothers brothers in arms, um, it, tragically lost um, probably the greatest boxer of all time recently. You were honoured yeah. to be a Paul Bearer at yeah. Muhammad Ali's funeral. Uh, you were a big inspiration to me growing up, and I'm, I'm sure that Muhammad was a similar kind of figure yeah. in your life. Yeah, he was. Uh, he was the man that started me out. I watched him on TV and I said, i got to be like this guy. He was, um, you know, he was a poet. He was an activist. He was everything combined. And uh, he... Um, you know, he transcended boxing. He was the father of boxing, and uh, you know, it, it was it was it's hard to see him go, but he's in a better place now. So it was a great honor for me and a privilege to lay the last, the greatest, to rest. It's been a great honor for me to meet you today. Thank yeah. you for coming, Obiem. Thanks, Thanks for Lewis. having you. You're a hero, Tomah. Nice. Thank you. Spot on. Spot on, yeah.